So who would have guessed that a smartphone called PP would have been so hilarious? I don't know, but it's become some sort of a meme on my channel now. Everyone is commenting about seeing my PP. However, I have something else to show you. I've already shown you my PP. I'm gonna show you some anal now. Greetings everyone and welcome back to a new series I'm calling Tacky Tablets, a series in which I test technologically terrible tacky tablets that I've collected over the years to demonstrate any redeeming qualities that these devices may have. So basically we're going to be having a look at a cheap product and going in depth with it, so timestamps are going to be in the description as well as the pinned comment and all that good stuff. I'll extract the system files from this device and put them down in the description so you can browse through them and uh, have a bit of a laugh if you want to. But anyways, the tablet that I'm going to show you today was released in about 2014 and I bought this from Cash Converters in about 2015 for $20 and it was sold as faulty and when I was shown this tablet we all just had a bit of a laugh due to the name of it and it was kind of just like this thing's hilarious okay fair enough and I've just had it with the collection since and since a lot of people got enjoyment out of the uh the PP phone I decided well why don't we have a look at this also strangely named contraption and see if it's any good because I did use it briefly back in 2015 for a few random games I got off the Play Store, but then that's about it. Yeah, we're going to be taking a look at the Android 4.27 inch Anoil, Anoil? Novo AX3 WCDMA Fablet MTK8382 Quad Core 1.3 GHz WSVGA IPS Screen 16 GB ROM Bluetooth Silver. And the brand is Anal. Okay, let's be fair, it could be Anal. But we'll get to that in a second. This was selling for $174.13 on Gearbest and it's now been discontinued. So I'll display a currency conversion chart of what it would have been back in 2014. I might show an inflation chart just in case. But regardless, this would have been 200 Australian dollars from whichever site you found this on. So I'll quickly just go over the highlights of this device. So it's a 3G phone tablet PC. It has one gigabyte of DDR3, 16 gigabytes of ROM, and it supports video calls online. And yes, this is a phone. We can test phone calls on this, I think. But it's only compatible with 2G and 3G networks, which it may not pick up Telstra. I'm not too sure. We'll give it a go. And then we've got the full specification showing our brand name. It's a phablet running Android 4.2 with an MTK8382 quad core processor at 1.3 gigahertz, 1 gig RAM, 16 gig ROM, Wi-Fi, 3G, Bluetooth, 7 inch IPS display with a 1024 by 600 resolution, 2 megapixel back camera and a 0.3 megapixel front camera. So not the best, but for 2014, it would have been more than enough. Battery capacity is only 2,500 milliamp hours in this thing. So for a 7 inch tablet, that's not a lot, but we'll see how the battery life goes on this. Sports a bunch of media formats, additional features, package contents would have contained the tablet PC, power adapter, USB cable, and a Chinese manual. That's about it. And there's two pictures in the listing. One that shows this, how big the screen is, and how thick it is, and how wide it is. I'm not going to make any jokes just yet. And the second picture is this, a lovely picture that's displayed on the tablet. It doesn't have the name there, so we'll just ignore that one. Okay, let's be realistic and fair here, all right? It's called Anal or Inal. It could be either way. Inal or Anal, however way you would like to pronounce it. I think it's funnier as Anal because they have a slogan. I'm just... Put the slogan on screen. Um, enjoy life. Enjoy Anal. <laughs> or it could be enjoy, enjoy life, enjoy Anal, but... Come on, they've got to be having a laugh here with that slogan. And I did check their Facebook page. Unfortunately, they're out of business. What a surprise. Back in 2012, they've made a post here that says uh, the slogan there and one of their tablets. And the timing just seems absolutely appropriate. We had a laugh at the PP and now we're going to be having a look at a seven inch anal tablet. What have I done to myself? Anywho. Here it is here. I did show it briefly in the intro. There's the brand name right there. Let's go for a bit of a close up. There you go. Just, uh, you can pronounce it however you want. Look, I'll agree that it's probably pronounced Einel, but the slogan, <laughs> it's something. Uh, 3G AX3 made in China factories, number blah, 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 5 volt, 500 milliamps, Wi-Fi, 3G, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. And it has a unique serial number supposedly. Uh, two megapixel camera, LED flash, speaker. The slot for the micro SD card is just exposed there, like so. But you might be wondering where the SIM card slots are. Hidden. Uh, we do have too many SIM card slots, so I'll just put a Telstra one possibly in there, see if it gets picked up. But it's got a metal finish on the back, quite nice. 
kind of premium. At the top of the device though, we do have a micro USB port as well as a 3.5 mil headphone jack and some cut out there that's just plastic. Could have been something. Maybe a micro HDMI port was supposed to go there, but they didn't implement it on this model. But anyways, continuing on. On the side, we do have the power and volume rockers just there and nothing on the other side. And then finally showing you the main attraction of this device, the seven inch display. So I've got an earpiece, our 0.3 megapixel front camera, and yeah, the seven inch display. Not really much to say. It's just a very generic looking thing, but this thing is a fablet. And uh, if you really wanted to, you could possibly shove the anal in your back pocket. It's appropriate place for it. Anyways, moving on. It's pretty scratched up. It's pretty beaten up. It's from 2014, so what, eight years ago? Not much to it. Let's grab an SD card and a SIM card, power this thing on, and let's check out our first tacky tablet called that. Will it even read a 16 gig micro SD card? It should do. Why doesn't the SIM card fit in the anal's cavity? Oh, it kind of does. Awesome. Slammy, bam, bam, bam. All right, now I have factory reset this, so we'll get to set it all up. And here we go. Time to power on the thing. Let's just, let's just call it a thing. That's what it's called. I don't know what it says next to it there. Probably that, but in Chinese, but as I said, an anal or anal or whatever. Uh, there's all the specifications there, which it shows on the boot screen. So this will be in the files extracted from this device, but it tells you everything it has. 4.2 Jelly Bean, Full HD 1080p. Does record Full HD 1080p videos, I can tell you that. Very bad quality though, but that's okay. Uh, says something about SIM which will just agree with that. And there we go. There we go, a little Android fellow just there. So we'll select next and we'll just leave everything. It does say 2013 there, so we'll just leave that. Detects my SIM card. Data connection set to the Telstra SIM. Won't connect to Wi-Fi just yet and finish. And then we have another setup screen for some particular reason. So we'll just set it up again. I'll leave Wi-Fi off. No Gmail accounts, not yet anyways. Ah, uh, yep, that's fine, completely fine. No problems. Could have called it something funny. That's okay. We're ready to go. There it is. We've booted up. And that's the display, which it's not the sharpest IPS display. I can definitely tell you that. And the wallpaper is super, super low quality. As you can see, those birds are barely legible. However, these birds are of slightly higher quality than the ones featured in Birdemic. So that's cool. But pretty much this is a stock Android 4.2 Jelly Beam. We've got camera, gallery, MX player, maps, file manager, uh, some random Chinese application, not too sure what that says. Calls, messaging, menu button, browser, settings, and then swiping along. Don't have anything there. Then going into the actual menu itself. Phone people, messaging, browser, camera, gallery, settings, video player, music file manager, email, calendar, clock, calculator, sound recorder, FM radio, downloads, movie studio, Bluetooth, proximity, wireless input device, OOBE. Don't know what that is. We'll check that. To do, GPS test, SIM toolkit, Play Store, Maps, navigation, local, Gmail, backup and restore, Google Plus. Oh, who remembers that? Google Plus photos, Google, iFly tech input, Google settings, QQ, MX player, Flash player settings, UC browser HD, voice search, ZD clock HD, UQ. Okay, some Chinese application there, Opera in Chinese, some Chinese application that says HD, uh, that Chinese application, and uh, K with a music box. Probably something to do with music. So that's all the default apps that are on this thing. We will pretty much just open them up quickly just to see what they are, because honestly, I don't know what they are. Swapping down, we do have the old notification shade just here. Fully charged this thing up, so we're all good to go. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, all that sort of stuff. I can't show you the torch as of now, but I remember using it back in 2015. It was absolutely horrible. Touching and holding, we can select from wallpapers. Oh, it says summer. It's just not cropped properly, so it says ummer. That's a bummer. We have some leaves. That actually looks kind of nice. Water and mountains and lights and stuff. I don't know what car that is. I am going to get told in the comments several million times what that car is. It looks like a Pagani possibly with the front end there. I'm not too sure. I can't see all of it anyways, so I can only see this little stretched image. Anywho, we've got a whole bunch of white balls with blue insides, so that's pretty neat. We have a snowboarder that's flying off the side of the screen. We've got some rainbows and stuff. And we've got, oh, a nice drop of water on a leaf or feather or something, I don't know. Pretty nifty wallpapers. Let's choose, you know what, let's stick with Ama. I like Ama. Ama's definitely the season of the year. Summer can definitely go get wrecked. Jumping into settings, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, 
and more. We'll select mobile networks just to see if we can actually pick up Telstra 3G because it hasn't popped up yet. So we'll just see. Nope. Okay. I'll swap SIM card slots just in case. I swapped to the other SIM card slot and I have a feeling the bands aren't compatible with Telstra. I could try Vodafone or Optus, but I can let you all know now, back in 2015, I did make a couple of phone calls with this thing just for the whole sake of it because of it being a huge phablet thing. And I remember the earpiece quality being absolutely terrible. So you're not missing much there. Microphone quality is... So, so anyways, moving on audio profiles, we do have the default ringtones, which I'm pretty sure these are all the default ringtones that are on Android 4.2, which there's a lot of them. Good customization options. We also have best order audio enhancer for earphones. Can't miss that. Display. Oh, scenes. What scenes? Oh, okay. So you can have, that's red. Oh, it changes the theme. Okay, let's set scene. Scene is theme. That makes sense. All right. Wallpapers, we've been through. Wireless display? Options for wireless display. Storage, one gigabytes of system storage, and the rest is available for use. I've got 16 gigs internal, and my SD card being 16 gigabytes. Battery, uh... Yeah, I have a feeling it is a 2500 milliamp hour one in this thing because I remember the battery life being fairly terrible on this and it just dropped another percent anyways. By the end of this review, it'll be at 10%. Just scrolling through the default applications on the device, just like so, there's going to be a generic media tech. One. Hey, cheeky Android, there he is there. Uh, all the stuff that we've pretty much seen on the PP phone is exactly the same here, except those Chinese applications that have been added to this. Uh, otherwise, not too much. System UI, Jelly Bean, of course. And that's about it, I'd say. Yep. I will run the secret codes application to just test to see if there's anything funny that comes up. And I will link all the applications that I use in the description. So if you want to try them on your own phone, go for it. But I'm not responsible for any damage. So just be careful. Location, security, can't do much here. No fingerprint, no face unlock, no fake fingerprint or fake face unlock. But you have voice unlock, pattern, pin. We may as well do voice unlock. Anal tablet. Anal tablet. Anal tablet. Anal tablet. Anal tablet. Anal tablet. Cool, man. Anal tablet. Oh. Anal tablet. Amazing. What an amazing piece of technology. Now I have to scream that every time I want to unlock this thing. Language and input. iFlyTech input is also there as well. So that's probably some sort of a keyboard option. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll just leave that. Backup reset. Add accounts. I'll do that soon. Date and time. Schedule power on and off. Accessibility options. Developer options are enabled by default, which I'll just quickly scroll through. Uh, wait, I can't do anything? Wait, what? Why can't I do anything? Why is it all grayed out? Maybe you're gonna enable it through here. And within about tablet, we don't have much here. We've got local update, status, legal information, the model number being the Numi 3G AX3 running 4.2.2, build number. Oh, so I'm now a developer. So can I go back? Oh, okay, I can do that. No, I can't. What's the point of that then? That's a bit strange. Easter egg, jelly bean, right there. Yeah, all the jelly beans, watch them go. Wee. just flick them off the screen. Checking in status, the serial number is unknown. I thought it may have been the one printed on the back, but nope, it's just unknown. And as for system updates, you actually have to download the update, put it on the SD card, and then run it from here. So there's no wireless update. I am gonna connect it to Wi-Fi. Just had to stuff around with my Wi-Fi settings on my router. Uh, I've now got it here. I had to set the channel to one. So I'll go ahead and connect this up to Wi-Fi. So we've changed the theme now. We now have Internet Explorer just down there. Burn it. But the theme does look nice though. It's red now. I never knew this existed on this. So that's kind of cool. Well, I guess at this point in time, let's start testing out this tablet then. And just keep in mind back in 2014, 2015, how well this thing would have done with just general functionality and stuff. So phone, we'll leave that. People, leave that. Messaging, we'll leave that. Browser, let's open up Internet Explorer. <laughs> See? Uh, Anal's website. Sorry, Einel, Einel is uh, gone. But you can use the Wayback Machine and uh, have a look at their website back then. It's something. It's definitely something. Good stuff. Let's go to Google. Here we are. Right, Google. Yay. And if we type in the tablet and press enter, there's a couple of people that have done videos on this, but not as stupidly in-depth as I'm doing. Actually, someone's selling this on eBay. How much are they asking for? Oh, 
That's right, the date. I forgot. We've got to set the date. No, the date is correct. It's just the security certificate has expired on this, so we can't do much. We can do YouTube. I'll load up the Costa Rica video soon, but just for standard browsing would be fine. It would have been fine back in 2014. Uh, we can go onto Amazon, actually, where they're selling this. It says white, but it's black. It's a black anal. Oh, God, shouldn't have said that. 185 euros for this thing? They're still selling this on Amazon. Only four left in stock. Whew, you better hurry and pick this one up straight away. Wireless communication technology. WLAN. Handy. Glad it is. 5.5 inch Android 4.4 smartphone. Screen size 7 inches. That's completely fine. That's legit. Okay, so browsing is average on this. It will do. So let's jump onto YouTube then. Here is the Costa Rica video. We'll put this in the absolute maximum resolution we can and we'll see how this looks. Oh, that's maximum volume. Yeah, the speaker quality is shit. So let's set this to 720p. Alright, that'll do. Alright. Um, uh, okay. I'm going to try that again. We appear to have problems with the YouTube video. No, I can't handle it. Let's not waste any time on that. Continuing on to camera. So we know the resolution. 2 megapixel rear camera, 0 0.3 megapixel front camera. It is not going to be anything special. Swap to the front camera. There it is there. Swap to the rear camera. And yeah, the flash is uh, just non-existent. Picture size in settings, there's 2 megapixels. And the video quality I did set to fine when I did my original test. And on the front camera, just to double check, VGA and EIS, which I did have on, but that does not work. Never works on these cheapo devices. So I'm going to splice in the photos and videos that I took with our lovely device here. And once again, keep in mind this device is from 2014, unlike our PP phone, that's from 2021, 2022, that took some wonderful pictures. This is eight years old, so give it some slack, all right? Enjoy what you're about to see. Okay, here we are doing the video recording for the Anal or Anal AX3 tablet thing from 2014, and this is the quality. Supposedly, according to the boot screen, it's 1920 by 1080 full HD. I, for some reason, highly doubt that. Also, that just the jelly movement. It's weird. It says EOS on the front camera, but not on the rear camera, which makes complete sense. But no autofocus, no nothing. It's just stuck, 2 megapixels, if that. Three Muppets, looking like so. You can sort of see what they are. Yeah, you can. Brick wall as usual. Down to Stuart. There he is, looking fine. Lemon tree that has zero lemons on it. No, there's nothing. And then the faraway aircon, we can go for a four times digital zoom, which looks a little something like that. And we'll just go back out and there you go. What does the sky look like today? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Anyways, that's the uh, camera test so far for the rear camera. Let's move on to the front one and see how that fares out. There's Ripley. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm recording video. You appear to be stuck. That's okay. You having fun? Yes? Having fun? Good? Happy? Okay. Yep. Having a good time. So, filming at night time looks a little something like this. 
I mean, if you get up close, you can see stuff, but otherwise, uh, fairly useless. Okay, this is the front video quality of the Inol or Anal, whatever you want to call this thing. This is the front camera quality, uh, no autofocus, no, wait, it has EIS, but I don't think that works at all. Um, for some reason it just looks very stretched, my head looks very, I mean, my head's oddly shaped anyway, so it really doesn't matter, but for 2014 it's okay, I suppose, it's not that good, it will do. I forgot about holding the tablet this way, I thought this would make a difference to the quality. I mean, it may not look a stretch now, but, you know, I'll just agree with it, it's completely fine. Okay, you've just seen the photos and videos taken with our friend here. While we did get 1080p video on the rear camera, the 1080p video is actually 640x480 that's stretched to 1080p. It's the world famous anal stretching technique that produces many precious piles of shit. Absolutely hits rock bottom there. I will not continue with this sentence anymore. So in a nicer way, 1080p video is true, but it's just 480p that's been scaled up. And the front camera, while the video wasn't the greatest, the photos on the other hand have halos or bright lights I don't know it just done it with every picture that I took with the front camera since I've already factory reset this the photos aren't on the device but you've already seen them you get the idea of the quality that this thing produces so I won't spend too much time talking about the photos and videos taken with um, let's not even mention the brand name because I just don't even want to anymore settings we've been through video player I don't think there's any default videos that they've loaded on this you'll have to go through the extract files to see if there is anything next up is music though go on BFG division time can we bump like, that's, that's as loud as we're gonna get. No point of even trying to do any equalizer settings. I'll just get the sound meter out for good measure. The sound, it's emitting from there. Here we go. Two words, fucking atrocious. That is probably the quietest speaker I have heard on a device this big. You would think that they would have at least maybe done two speakers or something like that. But no, just got a tiny little earpiece size speaker just there. That's fine for multimedia. That's completely fine. Good job, guys. Good job, anal, anal. Good job. File manager, email, calendar, clock, calculator. Let's see what the calculator looks like. Ooh, fancy. Sound recorder, FM radio. May as well try this. What's on Australian radio at 12.14 a.m. on a Thursday morning? No, Friday morning. I don't even know what day it is. Oh, it sounds great through the earphones. I'm gonna do a rating system for these tacky tablets. So far this is looking like a five, maybe a six because of the brand name. But anyways, moving on, Movie Studio, which I do believe this was included on Android 4 devices by default, but I can't quite remember. Someone will tell me down in the comments below. Bluetooth proximity, an app wants to turn on Bluetooth, deny or allow, allow. Proximity devices, not sure what you could use that for. Once again, someone with a bit more knowledge than I do will probably tell me exactly what that's used for. Well, it's input device, connect your keyboard or whatever up to this. What's Ubi? Oh, Ubi setup? Oh, okay. We'll just get out of that then. To do? Nothing in to do, which is good. GPS test. Oh, we've seen this before. We have seen this on another tablet before. This doesn't work. It might have been on that Wish tablet that I had a look at, which I'll cut up here if you want to take a look at that. That should be a tacky tablet, because that thing was just, it was good. It was great. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, this doesn't work. I probably do need to enable something in settings, but I'll continue on. Sim Toolkit, Play Store. Uh, we'll come back to that, because I haven't put my Gmail in as of yet. Maps, Navigation, which is just Google Maps. Okay, fair enough. Local. Here's just Google Maps again, okay. Gmail, Backup and Restore, Google+, Plus, Google+, Plus Photos, Google, iFly Tech Import, Google Settings, QQ. Cute little penguin. I always like the, uh, the little penguin for QQ. And obviously, I can't read any of that. And I don't have an account for this, so that's no good. MX Player. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's just a video player. Flash Player Settings. Three choices. Wow. Well, you say browser's obviously a browser. With a little squirrel. It's a little cute. Pick up where you left off. I thought that was a severed leg there for us. Okay, no, he's missing his heart. Never mind. Okay, that's... Yep, all right, cool. 
Should have used this for the YouTube test, probably would have been a bit better. You've got three choices of browsers on this, so I guess that's not too bad. Voice search. Anal tablet. Shit, I shouldn't have done that. ZD Clock HD. Is this where you prop this up on your desk and it shows the time and stuff? Basically a smart clock. Move right now. ZD Clock may not ring because of ZD Clock being installed in SD card. Please move ZD Clock to phone. Move right now. Back in these old Android days, you had to move stuff from the internal storage to the SD card. Oh, that was fun. Well, that's what that looks like. It's pretty nifty. Birthday and chimes and stuff. You something or other? Yuku. Yuku is this. Also, battery life is at 69% now. Good stuff. Sure, this do something. No idea what that is. Smiley face application, what do you do? For 2.1.1. Okay. Is this an... Oh, it's an ebook reader, possibly? Probably should have a phone with Google Translate on it, so I can just point it at it and tell you what it is, but I'll just assume it was an ebook reader. Uh, Opera, but it's all in Chinese. There's a monkey and Angry Birds and gaming, and 2014 was cool. Uh, this is something. We'll just see what this is. One hour bolo pad. Bolo pad. No idea. That's probably not going to load, is it? Nope, all good. Uh, something about HD. Oh, free wallpapers. Yes. 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 I'm going to be sitting here all night. No. You need an account. Yes. Okay, no idea. This? No idea. Sure thing. Nope. Doesn't want to work. And this thing? Ooh, what do you do? Oh, it's a media player. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff on here. Let's just try and play one. Shit, it actually works. I wasn't expecting that to work. Okay, so you can just play a whole bunch of sounds. Well, that's fairly interesting, but that's also all of the default apps that are on this thing. It can't run YouTube in full screen. The speaker's absolutely atrocious. There's a bunch of Chinese applications on here that I don't know what they do. So I'll add my Gmail onto this, put a whole bunch of applications on here, and we'll see if this tablet is worth the 189 euros that it had on Amazon. Why would they still be selling this? Who knows? Back in a moment. All right, so I've signed into a Gmail account on this, went to the Play Store, and then completely forgot that you can't have Minecraft and Crazy Taxi running on Android 4 anymore. I can download them manually and install them, but I'm pretty sure you all know how they would probably run. However, I did manage to install GTA 3 on here, so we'll try that. Got secret codes, system info, and device info hardware as well, so we can check these specifications. Let's try GTA 3 and see if our tacky tablet can play GTA 3 or not. Probably. Should do. Don't say why not. Put everything up to maximum because why not? All right, here we go. Let's see how this goes. Wait for it. Banshee. That speaker, man. That speaker. Here we go. GTA 3. And it actually isn't too bad. So let's get in the car and drive 8-ball around and try not to flip the car. Because I have a habit of doing that. The on-screen buttons don't disappear as well. Oops. Uh, sorry. It's smooth in some areas and then becomes laggy and then smooth again. Laggy, smooth, laggy, etc. It's playable. I mean, I've put everything on high settings, so I shouldn't have expected it to be completely at 60 FPS. But at the default settings, it probably would be completely fine. So if you did have this back in 2014, majority of the games that were on the Play Store at the time weren't super intensive, so they would have worked pretty much okay on this. The only game that I remember playing on this was a game called Traffic Racer. Really fun game, quite addictive, but that was pretty much fine on this. Also, it's starting to warm up around here. I wonder how big the motherboard's gonna be in this. I mean, we've got the SIM cards down here. We've got stuff up here, so I'm wondering if it's gonna be battery, flex cable, who knows? When we tear it apart, we'll have a look. So device info hardware. Let's see if this was actually telling the truth or not. So it's an unknown Numi 3G AX3. Doesn't say the uh, the name there. 1024 by 600, MT8382, 4.2.2, 1 gig RAM, Samsung flash module, and 16 gigabytes of storage. System on chip is the MT8382, which appears to have the same specifications as the MT6580. I'll have to check and see if it is. There's the wonderful name there. 
Too bad they didn't have a wallpaper with their slogan on this. That would have been really cool. Screen 1024 by 600. Let's do the multi-touch test as well. Five point multi-touch, really? Hey, that's not too bad. Camera shows a whole heap of cameras, but we know that two megapixel, 0 0.3, that is correct. Power profile, 1000 milliamp hours. We'll see when we tear it down. What's the thermal at? 48 degrees, 45 degrees. That's quite warm for this. Sensors, we've got an accelerometer and that's it. Moving on to the next application, we have the same stuff. Build ID is 2014, MT8382, 4.2.2, Jelly Bean, all that good stuff there. The CPU chip is the uh, brand name, not MediaTek. That's somewhat interesting. 16 gigs of storage, one gigabyte of RAM, 7.2 inches the display is, screen resolution, all correct there. Battery is good, glad it's good. That's pretty much it. Very basic, isn't it? I have to praise the manufacturers behind this because they didn't lie about the specifications. On boot up, when it shows all those specs and stuff, all of it is true. It does record in full HD, although in pretty terrible quality. It does appear to have this MediaTek processor in it, which when we tear it down, we'll see what's on there. It's just, Something that would have been good for around 2014 and 2015, and that's about it. Anything past that, there would have been much better devices out there, and especially from a brand called, um, I won't say it, I just won't say it. But we've got one application left, and that's the Secret Codes app. So I'll see if this shows anything, see if we can mess around with some stuff. And from looking at it, it doesn't look like there's any dodgy applications that can change the system specifications, but we've got engineer mode, usual media tech one, engineer mode, okay, that's different. Settings, shows tablet information and stuff. I forgot to show you the IMEIs. I'll show you them soon. Why is there five different things for Bluetooth? Oh, probably because some of these are for the wireless and all that sort of stuff. Let me show you the IMEIs actually. Let's see where there's a pinched off. Actually, there might not be pinched off anything. It starts with a four? That's a really weird IMEI starting with four. Well, if you want to take a look and see where these come from, feel free and let me know. That's pretty much all I want to look at on this tacky tablet. There's not a lot going on with it. As I said, for 2014, 2015, would have been fine to just say, here you go. Watch a few things on YouTube, take a couple of pictures, listen to some music with a poor quality speaker or all the extra feedback coming from the headphone jack. Nothing too spectacular here, but was this worth $20? Yes, because I got to make a bunch of inappropriate jokes about the brand name, even though the brand name's pronounced another way instead of the way that I thought it was. It's not the worst I've seen, but for some reason, if you do find this online and want to buy it, either you're buying it just for the whole sake of its name, or you're buying it because you don't know other tablets exist. Either way, probably don't buy this, unless you see it somewhere and want to buy it for the brand name, as I said. Completely up to you. I want to tear this thing down and have a look at the guts which I think that's what we're going to do. We'll take out life support, power off our buddy here. Off you go. Well, my friends, at this point in time, let's perform a colonoscopy. Okay, that happened. Oh, that happened too. This thing wants to attack me. Two screws pulled this thing together? Really? That's it? Oh, I've somehow booted it into a test menu. I didn't even realize. The guts. This is something. Where do you begin? I'll take the tape off so we can get access to the flex ribbon. Sure enough, it's a 2,500 milliamp hour battery in this thing. It's got some battle scars on there, but that's okay. That is our speaker right there. This thing is what they called acceptable. If you can see the earpiece just there, it's almost the same size as this. They've got room to put two in here. Why not put two in here? Rear camera and front camera are all connected to the same flex ribbon. And it does have a code just on there, if I can zoom in and possibly show you that. There you go. If you want to Google that, feel free. But we do have the headphone jack, SD card slot, the massive shielding just there, which I'm guessing that what we want to see is right there. And then we've got this little daughter board for the SIM cards that just connect to the main motherboard. We've also got a signal antenna that just goes to these bits just like so. Oh, okay. Well, that's... that's cool. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy. We have a Samsung flash module just there. Then we have a Kingston module just there. That would be the RAM. Actually, we've got two of them. That's interesting. Finally, we have our MediaTek processor, which is the MediaTek MT8382V. So I will Google that to see if it actually is the MT6580 just rebranded. It had a Mali 400 MP, it was clocked the same and it performed about the same. So I'd say it's the same. I said the same a lot there. Any other chips worth having a look at? Maybe we'll just take this, this one off, just in case. There could be something hidden in here. 
MediaTek chip in there. Can't quite see what that is. There's also a chip just there and I can't quite read what that says. It looks like it says GCD, GC, no, GoodX. I don't know, it says something there. I'll zoom in during editing so you can see that. That's it for the Inal tablet. Inal tablet. Call it whatever you want to. It's a very generic Android tablet. There's nothing too exciting about this, but I finally have got to tear it down after all this time. I've never taken this apart in all of the years that I've owned this. I have finally taken it apart. I finally tested it to its full potential, and it's a pretty terrible tablet. It will do. As I said, back years ago, this would have been fine, but for now, yeah, no, nothing special. Okay, did I plug the display back in properly? I did not. Oh, oh, hello. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Don't die on me now, friend. Yep, still works. Fixed a little flickering issue, so that's no problems. There we go. It's completely factory now. It still works, it's still alive, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna display the full specifications on screen. We already know them anyways, but I'll just display them. Feel free to pause the video, even though it's booting up and showing the full specifications, I'll just show them there. Just in case you missed something during the video, there you go, that's all of it there. Remember their slogan, enjoy life, enjoy Inal. They seriously had to be making a joke, they had to be. But in regards to this tacky tablet, I'm giving this a five. The brand name's funny, the display is not too bad, the build quality is so-so, and then pretty much everything else is quite terrible from there. As I said, it would have been acceptable years ago, but nowadays it's pretty much e-waste at this point in time, but it's nice to have in the collection just for the whole sake of it, due to that. Well, anyways, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the first installment of Tacky Tablets. It was just the PP phone. How that video has gained so much traction, I have no idea, but that's becoming quite a popular video because everyone just found it quite funny, and I just thought that this would be funny reviewing, and I also have a bunch of other tablets that are quite questionable in the quality department that I'd love to feature on the channel, so that's why I just thought of Tacky Tablets, thought of featuring this as the first one, just because of the brand name, and here we are. If you want to see more tacky tablets, let me know down in the comments below, and I'm more than happy to make some more videos of them, because it's just fun just taking a look at some rather poorly built tablets that either have no brand name or are just as generic as they come. I would like to cover them in depth and see how they go. But otherwise, get this out of the way. And of course, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much for that, I appreciate it. You didn't have to watch this in one go though, timestamps in the description, as well as the pinned comment, so you can skip to wherever you need to be. I go in depth with my videos, as you all know, this video has probably gone on too long, so I'm letting you know now right at the end, which is really helpful. But the extracted files from this thing are in the description as well, so feel free to go through that, and if you find anything interesting, let me know down in the comments what you find. I don't think there'll be too much in there, but if you do find something funny, feel free to share it. But anyways, everyone, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy this for what it was, and as I said, if you want to see more tacky tablets, let me know, and I'll be happy to do some videos for them later in the future. I do have a laptop that I need to review, and I'm in the middle of reviewing another mobile phone that I got off AliExpress. It's one that we did find on one of my random live streams. It's quite an interesting device, I will say that, so stay tuned for that one. But anyways, everyone, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it, and as always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which will probably be the phone I got off AliExpress, most likely, and then the laptop, and then something else, and then possibly something else. We'll see how we go. Anyways, if you ever find one of these or have used one of these, please feel free to let me know and tell me the right way of saying this, okay? So then we can clear the air. Just their slogan though, come on, the slogan. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.